Hi, everybody. This is Dee Dee Russell with WeddingVenueOwners.com and the Wedding Venue Owners and Managers community on Facebook. And we love when we get to reach out to our venue owner group and community and find our experts willing to share information and insight and to share their wedding venue stories. So that is my greatest passion. And I am so excited today to once again be meeting with Connor. We, we meet a lot and we talk about a lot of things. Connor Eves with the Mama Son and, I, and we do weddings. And for the first time, Karen and Ken Moyes, and um, correct me, I love to murder uh, names on this, um, you know, on all, all podcasts. So um, you will introduce yourselves and share a little bit about what you do and um, your passion for weddings and we'll go from there. So Connor, please introduce yourself and then we'll get to Karen and Ken. Hi guys, it's so nice to be back. My name is Connor and I work for those two lovely people at the bottom of the screen. I'm their right hand gal and I get to help them with all kinds of things. And I love being in the wedding business and being here with Dee and talking about all the fun things. So thank you for having us Dee. And a little behind the scenes tip, Connor's also a mommy's own bride. So she got married at mommy's own as well. I Connor, did. always keeping stuff from me. Well, you know, that's why we do these things so often is so that I can just pull out that good information. Exactly. So I'm excited to see some of those photos pretty soon. I'll yeah. share some with you. It was a pretty, pretty day. They're All great. right, Karen They're and great. Ken, if you will introduce yourselves. So Karen and Ken Louise, I'll do the talking because he normally gets to do all the talking at, for our <laughs> normal day jobs, which is healthcare. But we have been, and actually I've been in the wedding industry business for probably greater than 40 years, but we got into the wedding venue industry business about 12 years ago when we decided to build a wedding venue as a family retirement plan project. Um, so there's a lot of uh, behind the scenes stuff that go into going into business with your family. And that's a whole nother episode, but I'd say we're probably some of the lucky ones that we had an incredibly very supportive family at first um, that, you know, saw this as my dream and helped us build this incredible dream. Um, we are starting our eighth year in, in actual with the wedding venue. We've done over 700 weddings to date. Um, they have been, you know, not without the typical, you know, trials and tribulations of being a venue owner. But, um, you know, to date, we, we love it. We love everything about the wedding business. You know, there are those challenges. But I think probably one of the most important things is this actual network and this Facebook group. And if there are any wedding venues out there that have other wedding venue friends that are not on this um, Facebook group, they really need to join um, because I was fortunate enough to be with Dee Dee for her very first launches for the wedding venue vacation, working vacation um, meetups. And we have just learned so much from just sitting down and chatting, you know, mono to mono back and forth and giving each other great advice. And so that's what Ken and I are hoping that we can actually do today for the listeners for the um, wedding venues group. Oh, thank you, Karen. And Ken, a little bit about you. Um, so I'm kind of in the wedding business by default. Um, my wife has, uh, I've been in medicine for 35 years. I'm a high-risk obstetrician, board certified in maternal fetal medicine. My passion is taking care of moms who have babies with problems. And I run a fetal center here in Austin, Texas, which is my fourth fetal center I've developed. Um, Karen uh, approached me about, what is it, 10 years ago now? Mm -hmm. and we were buying some retirement property and said, uh, this looks like a nice piece of land, but I want to build a wedding venue on it. And I went, really? So my role is supportive. She's always supported me throughout my career. It was her turn. So she moved from Houston to Dripping Springs here to start the venue. And I helped her with the construction. And uh, I'm the maintenance guy. So on the weekends, I'm a weekend warrior. I do all the maintenance stuff. So I can tell you everything about the pumps and the irrigation systems and the septic systems. That's my job. And so she does the business end and does it well. And I just deal with the uh, physical plan. Uh, during COVID, we, unbeknownst to us in December of last year, we decided to build a chapel. Um, so I drew the plans for the chapel, hired the contractors. And in the midst of COVID, we built this giant chapel that sits on the property too now, which we thought was going to be a, and still do think it's a great addition to our property. So that's my role. Well, and I love that everybody, um, 
a lot of the, the people that joined the wedding venue owners community, there was one person that had the idea, the passion, the energy and excitement. And then in the relationship, there's one partner that is either supportive or being dragged along for the ride. But I would love to ask you both a little bit, what would be your advice for those couples that are starting this process? On occasion, both are very excited, but usually that's before they've done it and they see what is happening and they get that first angry person or their first challenges or what have you. So what would be your advice to couples starting this process? I think probably you, you want to start off. I know this, we're going to start about, we're going to talk about business, but you got to start off with that great business plan. And that business plan is also your life plan. So if you're married or in a relationship or even just have a partnership, you need to start off that relationship, number one, with that plan. And you need to come in with rules about uncle, you know, when I can't take it anymore or I need help over here. Um, so I, I think going into this business, you don't go into it, you know, you got to go into it with open heart, open mind and, you know, open head. Um, it's not for the faint at heart. Um, what I have seen to date is um, venues that are successful. They have done their homework. So they have done their solid business plan. They do make those hard decisions. He's my hard decision guy. He's, he's the um, head guy. I'm the heart person. So I would give away all of our business because I, that's my love language is serving and giving. And he reminds me that our mortgage still comes due every month and our utilities. So he's the head over here. I do think it takes that type of yin and yang couple for a successful relationship. And the good thing is, is, when I've actually been beaten up by those couples that, you know, come in and we've all had them, you know, he'll come in and bring a, a completely total, you know, um, you know, fresh idea or fresh experience. And I've actually had to pull him in a couple of times to deal with them when I, you know, had gotten so upset that I went to a full blown monkey brain and I needed my head over here to talk because my heart was about to blow. Well, that is an amazing you know, bit of insight there. And Ken, I would love to find out from you and, you know, it's so personal and we try to say business, 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 but the business of weddings is very personal. I mean, most of our clients are our clients one time, I'd say almost all of them. And, um, you know, yeah, their cousin or their sister or someone in their, their grouping might get married. One wedding we hope leads to three because of the group of 150 guests that came that we might residually get more obviously, but, um, in those moments when somebody is upset with you or they didn't read their contract or they have spent too much and they get close to that 90 day range before their wedding and then they start to panic and then it's kind of your fault or you're you're the target of my stress or whatever those things are when that happens and and you feel it in your heart and can when you have your logic and rationale what are some of the what are some of the things you do like we we were talking about um uh, closets before I will edit that and, and cut that part out, the intro in the beginning. Uh, there have been a time or two when I was uh, in my co closet crying with a glass of wine and enjoying the scenery of my shoes to pick me up out of that frantic uh, moment where I didn't think I could come out of the closet and join life again. But Ken, when these things are happening, how what, what do you do to kind of uplift that moment to kind of bring it back to a perspective, a focal point and move forward? Well, you know, it's it's a natural tendency for the guys to be protective, right? So when I see her get this distressed about it, I've got to pull her out of it. And and many times what I have found is I go talk to the guy. So I do a guy to guy talk because the bride is emotional and the mother-in-law is emotional. And so when I sit down with the groom and we talk turkey about what's the problem and, and what, what do we need to resolve and how can we fix this? It's amazing to me how often we can work through that and keep emotions low because the grooms are kind of separate from all the planning and the dreams of the perfect wedding that young women have their whole lives. And so he's sort of ancillary. I was ancillary. Karen made all the arrangements for our wedding. She took me to look at the horse and buggy once. I said, it looks great. But, you know, that's the way we kind of play our role. So if I can talk to the groom or, or the groom's dad or whoever's paying the bill and say, let's work this out. What's the issue? Usually we can get it resolved. Not always perfectly, but for the most part, we can get it resolved and sort of take the emotion out of it and get down to what the real cause is. What I would say that's been helpful for us, and Karen's having you read most of the books she's read uh, to learn as we go, is having processes in place. And for me, again, being the physical plant person, which is so much of what happens to us is having a good physical plant that works all the time. 
And that's, that's not easy in the country. You know, we live off the grid. We're on septic and propane and wells and delivered water. And so we have SOPs, we have whole manuals. I mean, I have a whole manual of what happens when the water goes out? What happens when the septic backs up? And it will all happen. If you own a venue long enough, it's gonna be A, abused by the client because mm -hmm. it's not their property. And in the beginning, I took that to heart. I had to walk away some days because I'm like, you're messing with my property and it's brand new. I finally got over some of that and said, yeah, that's going to happen. That's why we have a damage deposit and we just fix things. And so people run over signs and they run over lawns they're not supposed to and things. And you just, you have to go with the flow, accept some of that's going to happen and then figure out what your plan is. Make the rules, make sure the contract has the rules in it, get a damage deposit up front. And Karen comes back with one of your needs and said, you know, none of these people with these mansions charge damage deposits. I went, oh my God, they are so naive. People will damage that property. That's not their property. And so that was one of the first things she did is put damage deposits into the contracts and get that up front and let people know the rules, know that nobody intentionally damages the property, but it will be damaged by a guest, by a vendor, whoever. I mean, our first wedding, the bus took the gate off the hinges at the front entrance. The first wedding. The and first went, oh one. My oh my gosh. Yeah, there were pieces of, of the bus down the driveway that she hit it and the guests knew it and nobody else did. And I went out there when I heard the noise, started taking pictures of the gate that was off the hinges. We had to change our gate. We had to weld the gates together, make them disappear behind a brick wall. And then they were hit anyway. And so now with these big boulders in front of the gates, like I dare you to hit the boulders. And the gate's fine now. Nobody hits the gate. But you, you don't even think about things like that when you put a venue together and you have to work through those, kind of accept them as part of what's going to happen and just keep going. So, Absolutely. Well, and I, I love it when I do, um, you know, as we start to compile information for the wedding venue owners of the world and really make it accessible and easy for them to find. So many of these pieces pop up, but that relationship piece is so big. I think we could do a series on that, um, you know, just just remembering that, you know, people have different ways of handling things in, in a relationship. And if there is one that can be a little bit more logical with numbers and math and, and dedicated precision and methods, and the other one can bring that loving emotion. And, and it's, it's not always gender-based. There's a, I, I've met a few, um, one of my favorite venues in Fredericksburg, um, the owner is like the Indiana Jones of weddings. He's got the hat, he's, he's 78 or uh, pushing 80 and he books more brides than anyone. I, he loves it. He loves the process and he just loves weddings. And I think that's part of what makes a successful wedding venue. There are um, venues that can churn out numbers, but when you have heart and passion um, behind the business running the wedding venue, then I think it's a whole other level of success that can be reached and also enjoying what you do. And when I see the couples enjoying together, having a rhythm or a system, which again, I'd like to explore in deeper conversation one of these days, um, since you guys have so much free time, we could just do this every Friday. I'd be happy with that. That would make my life. I just wouldn't schedule anything else. Oops, I'm going to edit that out. Um, so we want to talk a little bit about segueing, um, you know, the venture with Maumesan, which we can't cover in a lot of detail today because we'll run out of time. But that is one venture. That is one process, along with all of your healthcare and everything you do in the medical field and, and uh, you know, all of the things you think about and focus on, on for that, which is hugely important. But then also your business, uh, not to mention any personal life you might have and family. But now... What leads us to, uh, we do weddings. What leads us to the point where the, the spark is made and the, the thoughts are kind of forming and the, and the sense of urgency to provide something like this? Where does that come from? Well, again, it kind of like generates back to who we basically are as a couple and being service-minded and serving and giving and helping others. And um, we were just bantering back and forth, I think one Sunday afternoon when we may have actually had an, a few moments to actually talk back and forth about, you know, how could we actually book our other dates? How could couples know about our other dates? And I think this happened probably a year or two before the 10, 10, 20 wedding venue that, you know, everybody had to have that wedding date at that wedding venue, 10, 10, 20. And we actually could have sold that date 10 times and we ended up not even having a wedding that day because it was right in the middle of COVID and everyone canceled. So it, it just, this idea of creating a, a wedding venue matching service for our clients 
Um, and then at the same time, I'm not going to lie, we were incredibly frustrated by how our um, online um, memberships to, I'll name it, the Knot and Wedding Wire, when we first started um, 12 years ago, we were online and at the exact same level of service that we were when we when we finished. And that was at the highest level. And at the time it was $1,400 a year. And when we finished, it was close to 15,000 a year. And I told them, I have my contracts and I showed them that was a 900% increase in what we were being charged. And yet I do feel like 12 years ago, the knot and wedding wire drove weddings to us. But what we started seeing in like the past four or five years is leads actually increasing and responses to those leads, because we're very methodical about responding to those quickly, those leads uh, responses started dropping off dramatically. And we would even try to even do a little Intel search and even Google some of these names and they would come up as bogus on other people's websites. So we then started to question our, you know, our service dollars that we were spending for marketing and advertising and decided we wanted to kind of put that to a different use and maybe create a wedding venue matching service where couples could go, I need 10, 10, 20, and I need it for 50 guests or I need it for 100 guests and I need it in Texas. And they can just put in those few filters and bam, they've got like the wedding venue or several in the area that they can go to. And again, so we're helping two people there. So we've got our service minded that we're passion that we're serving our couples and we're helping them find the ideal venue. We'd like her to be mommy's own, but we have an amazing venue partnerships out there. And then we're helping our vendor partners, those relationships that we have with other vendors. And you and I, we've met some amazing venue owners throughout the country as we've been doing these, you know, working vacations. And, you know, they'll ask us questions. They're always asking us, where do we advertise? And we're basically created this vehicle to advertise, to get those actual qualified leads for a nominal uh, the cost that, you know, that we were paying with the knot and wedding wire. So we are completely now on we do. We have the free listing on knot and wedding wire. We're still getting leads. Not sure how we're getting them. We did not close those accounts. We'd never tell anyone to close their accounts. They can go down to a free account because you can still get reviews, even though you're not paying for um, to be on their higher up of uh, advertising. Well, I was going to say, when we first started this idea, it was called Last Minute Brides. Yeah. I didn't and the that. idea was that, well, I need a venue in three months, and there's no way I'm going to call these venues and find them booked. How could I go to one site? And, you know, I love the commercial. The guy comes in, I have the perfect idea. We'll call it Canoe. So we said, we'll call it Last Minute Bride. And that's actually where it started. We said, you need a wedding venue in three months. You're not going to find it calling all these venues out there. I'm going to tell you they're booked. But what if you could go to one site? Now you can buy a car on site or you can sell a car on site. You'll come pick it up at your front door. People are very, you know, internet savvy when it comes to searching. But nothing like this existed in the field. There was no connect for finding a, a venue that met your specs, particularly if you had a day in mind, a specific important day, or, or a period of time, even a month or a week or whatever. And what's interesting is the venues, when we began to talk to them about it, said, well, we don't want people to see our calendar. And, and that's the key about this is you don't see their calendar. You just see their availability. So when people first sign up for, for uh, we do, they say, well, we don't, we want to hide our calendar. It's hidden. So all the search does is look at what's available. If you put the whole month out there, that's what they're going to get. So they're still able to sell other days if that venue meets the qualifications. Some people don't search by dates. They search by season, season or they search by capacity or do they have online catering or in-house catering. So all those options are on the search capability. And then they search by zip code. I want to get married in Austin. I want to get married in some other part. So our hope right now, we're sort of limited to Texas, but our hope would be to go nationally where you could search from anywhere and find a venue in New York or in Virginia or in Louisiana and be able to say, okay, I know where I want to go because some people do distant weddings all the time now. Absolutely. And some of it's involving costs too. We have a lot of New Yorkers come down to Texas to have a wedding, a destination wedding, because they can get twice the wedding 
So cost is in this in this search capability too. You can choose how much you want to spend, and then you know whether if you're within the range of that venue. And multiple venues pop up, so it's not just one venue. It would be all that meet your search capabilities. So it's it's the canoe, if you were to finding a wedding venue. Well. I really want to just touch on a few points um, quickly. We'll see if I'm capable of that. Um, first and foremost is I have, it's very rare to find someone as absolutely eager to support other businesses as Karen has been. Um, you know, I get a little emotional. I've been doing this for about 20 years, working in events and things like that. I love my venue owners. Um, I talk to them Weekly, I, I have somebody inbox me frantic. I have people that have spent every cent that they have and now they're down to nothing and they don't know what to do. I um, talked to a venue owner um, just a few days ago and I could hear the tears in her voice. Um, you know, this is an investment. This is the investment in their retirement. This is their children's future. This is where they live. This is everything they have. It is not just like, and, and, and I don't want to diminish anyone else starting a business, but for example, me, I don't own a wedding venue. I have been in venue management and catering and event management for years, as well as chamber of commerce background. Um, my goal was to bring venue owners together to share information and share knowledge. And the reason for that is when you are under the, I mean, this might be dramatic, but oppressive regime of a certain system that is dominating or monopolizing um, with only, uh, you know, major focus on revenue and overheads and CEO expenses and, and annual, you know, costs Projection. and all of those types of, that, of things for their um, heads of office, you really forget the heart of the business and the heart of the business is what the ed wedding industry is really all about. It's one of the, it might be the only one I know of other than maybe healthcare um, and EMTs and service like that, that you really you love, like you, your love for, for other human beings, for their moments, for their special occasions, for their life, you know, really loving other people and their experience, it motivates you. So when I see venue owners failing because they have spent too much, because they have been talked into something that really wasn't beneficial to their business, um, it's, it's, it's quite hard. And I've been listening to it for years and years and years. I want to just put one thing out there. If our venue owners could understand a little bit you know, about someone like Karen who ha has, seems to have no sense of competition whatsoever, other than from that research perspective and from, you know, knowing what's happening in your market, that's a bit different. If our venue owners could get off their island and connect with other venue owners, they would realize they could lead the wedding industry in an entire different direction. They could take their, re their, their funds and their, their funding and their, their main resource, that revenue that they have, and they could generate it for their own business. They could keep more of it for themselves. They could focus on their own website generating leads, um, and they could work with other venue owners to thrive and grow, to have access to the most innovative information. Um, there is so much our venue owners can do. They can change their market. If your market isn't well-known and the venue owners get together, they can pull their money for marketing and advertising through systems like this, through other venues, you know, to work together to change the entire dynamic of their market. Instead of being teeny tiny little islands floating out with no connectors and being at the mercy of someone else giving you whatever leads they deem they want to give you. And I, I you know, I, I've um, done a lot of research over the years. You know how I feel about that, but I want to focus on the positive today. And that is that there are venue owners like Karen who are eager to share knowledge, who are eager to connect, who are eager to see you succeed. Because when venues in Austin and Dripping Springs, and then on the further, you know, you go out towards Dallas and DFW and San Antonio and Houston, and you continue to go further out, when you are supporting each other, you are all winning because you are all making an impact for your market. Mm -hmm. And that's the beautiful thing. So I know we're gonna run out of time soon, but I wanna hear more about how people can contact you for We Do Weddings and connect with you and get that process started. Um, I do want to offer you know, all the wedding venue Facebook um, owners and listeners out there that are part of this group. Um, we're going to give away to the first five people that reach out to us. It doesn't matter where you are in the country. The first five venues that reach out to us, you will get a full year of advertising, SEO, placement, everything with We Do Weddings. And so, um, heart, 
Sir Hart. Hart. Uh, oh, Ken, did you know this was happening? Uh, no, we did just, not know. No, uh, just, uh, uh, just, uh, um, yeah, I didn't know. <laughs> but, I mean, but I mean, you just think about, you know, our Georgia friends, our Alabama girls, yeah. you know, our Pennsylvania peeps, you know, our, you know, New Orleans people. First five people that, you know, reach out, they can either reach out to Dee Dee or to Mommy's Own um, private message. You will get a full year of. Uh, okay, I'm going to one up because I'm a New Orleans boy and they're in bad trouble right now. Mm -hmm. I think we should do the same for just the Louisiana folks. Okay. So five nationwide, five Louisiana. That's me. Okay. Oh, I'm so, I'm so sorry. You're so stingy, Ken. It's so sorry yeah. that you, you showed well, up. Well, I mean, our heart's aching The whole thing's um, back. Look yeah. at Ken with that big old heart over there. Yeah. Oh, all right. All right, David and for Matthew House and all our peeps in New Orleans, here's your chance. Oh yep. my gosh, that is absolutely incredible. Oh, Ken and Karen, you are so incredibly amazing that I'm kind of speechless. I'm just like, I mean, explain what that means to a business. Explain what that's going to mean for a business. I'm going to let Connor talk now. There you go, Connor. Um, you know, so we do weddings is such a great thing because not only are you getting to have your venue up on this website where couples are going to see you, we have really big things coming this fall. So the timing could not be more perfect, but also too, it's all about that connection again, right? So anybody in the, we do family, we're going to connect with you. We're going to make sure that everything that needs to be happening for you is happening. Caitlin and I, Caitlin couldn't be here today, but she's the other part of the, we do family. And, you know, day in and day out, we're checking in with our venues. We're putting you all over Instagram, Facebook, shouting you out, letting people know that you exist. And it really is the whole purpose behind We Do Weddings is helping people, loving people and supporting people. And we know now more than ever after COVID and kind of even still dealing with COVID because you know it's back on the rise again, venues are hurting. And so the whole purpose behind it is to help you fill your dates and to help you get your name out there. Because the biggest problem for most venues is that a, their name's not out there, or B, maybe when people are coming to their website, it might not be the best first impression. And if we do weddings is behind you saying, guys, this is a great venue, then it's going to really get brides and grooms in front of you and make that connection. So it's exciting. I, I, that I is this, so exciting. We're seeing this in the, and in, in believe it, a tie burst of weddings. It's kind of like if, you know, babies have to be born, eventually the little girls are going to get married. And, and so births are, are scheduled to go up next year. So as we come out of COVID, although we're back in a peak right now, I suspect by, I'm speaking as a medical person, by spring of next year, COVID is going to start to wane, hopefully for good. All these brides have been holding back. Maybe they did get married, the justice of the peace. They still want to have that perfect wedding. There's going to be a rush next year. And, being, and there are going to be a lot of people trying to find venues very quickly. And a tool like this is going to let them do that much easier when a bride gets on the site. And of course, if they're on the site, because they're going to want certain dates or times of the year, or whatever, and they're going to be booked. Everybody's going to be trying to book in the spring next year or book in the fall next year. And so being able to get to one site, click in there, start looking at venues that meet your criteria makes perfect sense. So it's going to happen and we got to be ready for it before the onslaught comes on next year when we all begin to dig out of this crazy hole we've been in for so long. So look, I, I would say that Connor's amazing. She takes your hand and walks you through the process it's hooked up to Google Calendar, so you can do it all electronically. If you keep Google Calendar for your events, it goes automatically over to WeDo. So it already populates the calendar in the website. So there's a lot of things we thought about that we know venues uh, can take advantage of to make it easier. But she'll walk you through the process to be sure you know how to do it. I'm going to make sure and put Connor's information in this video, as well as both websites, the Mame Sans, so that you can go and check that out. It's one of the most stunning wedding venues you could imagine. And as stunning as it is online, it just doesn't compare to when you see it in person. There's, wow, that thing over there and this thing over there. And oh my gosh, and everywhere you look. And can I just say, I use the Mame Sans as branding 101 actually a little more advanced than that, but I, I love the branding um, and the design and how methodical you have been with branding and elevating your brand. So again, that's a topic we could discuss uh, for hours and hours, but it's brilliant 
And I will put some links in there for that as well as we do weddings. And then we wanna remind everybody to continue to connect with your venue owners and your venue owner colleagues and how vital that is. We were gonna talk about a lot of trends, but we're running out of time. So I wanna remind people to look up Wedding Venue Owners Working Vacation on WeddingVenueOwners.com. I'm going to have the links to um, wedding, uh, I'm sorry, We Do Weddings. It is prominently linked in many, many places on the website because I believe in it wholeheartedly. I believe that starting to focus on each other as wedding venue owners and uplift and support each other's and then find the solutions. I have created a new wedding resources page and a section of wedding resources. And um, We Do Weddings is, is uh, in the process of being listed in all of those sections. So the wedding resources is a place where you can sell your wedding venue or find a wedding venue for sale or find business coaches or find social media marketing support real estate agents that understand um, wedding venues. But what I found is that almost all of our wedding venue owners have something else that they're an expert in. They have that corporate background. They have been an accountant for 20 years or in human resources. Um, they have been delivering babies. Um, so may maybe Ken is also going to give a discount for that baby boom next year. Anyone that wants to go to there Austin and, and have, why would you ever want to have a baby anywhere else? Let's just go exactly. and have that baby well, in Austin. Ken's going to, you know, maybe he's going to throw in that 3D ultrasound or something for free. I don't know. We'll, we'll touch on that next time, but we'll, we'll throw that little seed of thought out there. Well, let, let Dee, Dee, let me offer this to you. I, I think my expertise from all these years here, we live out, you know, we're off the grid. Yeah. There are a whole unique set of challenges to build it, either building or maintaining a wedding venue off the grid. I'm happy to be a consultant. I mean, I, I take care of generators, septic, propane, water. I test water. I'm a water engineer for the state of Texas, uh, testing our water uh, weekly. There's a whole bunch of things that I can share that I've learned over the last six or seven years on the, the physical plan and how to maintain that and not get into trouble with your physical plan falling apart in the midst of a wedding. I you know? think what I'm hearing or what's pinging and with the bells going off for me is that you have a, oh my God, this happened. And there's always those at every single wedding, but it, I think Ken's perspective would be a, here are some of the top 10 or top 20 things that happened. And here's how we resolve them. Here's how Absolutely. you plan for them. And it's always the thing that hasn't happened at your venue. Those generators, those sump pumps, those weird things that happen. There is no perfect event. I don't care who says what. There is always something weird that happens or unexpected because there's too many variables that always connect together like a puzzle piece. So when, some, when one piece is missing or something happens, there's always a solution if you can keep your cool and have a resource like you can. So I am absolutely going to be listing all of you in those resources. Um, for coaching, I just want to highly, highly recommend look to your wedding venue community first. Find venue owners that understand what it means to be a CPA that owns a venue. Find venue owners that understand what it is to own a wedding venue and sell real estate or solve problems or be a business coach. Please connect with those and they will be listed um, in the wedding venue resources on weddingvenueowners.com. And we have our wedding venue owners working vacations. So in October, we are going to Washington DC, October 10th. Um, at the end of October, I don't have my calendar in front of me. I believe it's the 24th to the 27th. It's listed on weddingvenueowners.com. Hi. And um, there. So hi. And then, um, so we'll be in Houston at the end of October. So we might get a chance to see one of you, uh, at least in Houston. And then next year we have Dallas, Austin, San Antonio. So Texas is really big because everything's bigger in Texas, right? Absolutely. So before we run out of time, um, just want to say I love you guys and thank you for being here. And any last words before they cut us off? We wish you well. Reach out to We Do. We'll be there for you. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dee Dee. Thank you guys so much for being here. And next time we'll talk about all those trends and all those things that are banned at wedding venues and fun stuff like that. Pompous grass. Okay. Bye. <laughs> Bye, guys.